EDUS 14 introduces two new classes of univariate time series diagnostics and tests to help identify changes in the distribution or pattern of the underlying data. These diagnostics are tests for the existence of time trends and tests for the existence of change points. Testing for time trends is an important pre-step to most time series econometric analysis, such as unit root tests or cointegration analysis. Whilst it is often natural to use a visual inspection of the data to determine if there is a time trend, eViews now offers both parametric and non-parametric tests for formally testing the existence of time trends. The change point tests introduced into eViews test for a change or shift in the location or central tendency of the data. The existence of a shift in the level of a data series is often an important econometric question in and of itself, but is also a necessary pretest before performing further econometric analysis. To demonstrate the use of these tests in eViews, we'll grab some monthly seasonally adjusted housing data from 1959 through to the present day from Fred. We'll put these data into a new work file. We'll also grab quarterly real GDP and put it into a second page. A quick look at the graph of the housing data shows the data have large swings, with cycles of booms and busts. However, there doesn't appear to be any overall trend or change in the central location of their distribution. GDP, unsurprisingly, has a large upward time trend. We can test these statements more scientifically using the new built-in diagnostics. We'll start by checking for the existence of a trend in the housing data. We open the series and click on View, Time Series Diagnostics, Trend Tests. The dialog includes options mainly centered around the use of bootstrapped p-values. We'll go with the default options and just click OK to reduce the test results. The results include a number of different tests for trends, along with two sets of p-values. The first column of p-values are analytical p-values from the underlying distribution. These p-values are only accurate if the underlying series has no autocorrelation. This is often not the case with economic data, and so bootstrapped p-values are also provided in the second column. The bootstrapped p-values can be seen as more representative in most cases. Each row of the table displays the results for a different test. In each test, the null hypothesis is that the underlying series do not have a time trend. The first two rows test the null against the alternative hypothesis that the underlying series has a linear time trend. In our cases, both tests fail to reject the null hypothesis of no trend with the bootstrap p-values. The third and fifth rows show non-parametric tests which have alternative hypotheses of a monotonic trend. Again, we fail to reject the null. These tests indicate that the housing data do not follow a linear or monotonic trend. If we quickly perform the same test on the GDP data, we unsurprisingly reject the null hypothesis across all tests. GDP clearly follows a time trend. Moving on to the change point tests, we'll go back to the housing series and click on View, Time Series Diagnostics, Change Point Tests. As with the time trends tests, the dialog offers options on bootstrap p-values. Again, we'll just use the defaults. Like with the trend tests, the output shows the results of a number of different tests. The null hypothesis of each test is that the mean of the data does not change. Each test shows a test statistic alongside the most likely point in time where a change of mean does occur, alongside both analytical and bootstrapped p-values. As with the trend tests, the analytical p-values are only appropriate if the underlying data 
does not follow an autoregressive process. The last three tests are non-parametric tests and suggest the most likely date of a change in mean is May or September 2007. However, all three are unable to reject the null hypothesis of no change in the mean, at least at a 10% level. The first three tests are parametric tests and all suggest that September 2007 is the most likely change point. The Quant Andrews Max and X tests are able to reject the null hypothesis of no change at the 10% level.